Alright. Oh, what a nice little town. There's a house. And something in this barrel, I bet. I think most towns like this have something hidden. It's rope. Who gives a shit? Thanks. Alex Cross was a tumultuous town grown fat on the prosperity of centuries. Exotic gewgaws bulged in storefront windows. I don't remember if that's how you pronounce that. Each mere fractions of the wealth that coursed daily through the busy trading town. Um, over it all loomed the impressive bulk of the Abbe Shop, which I'm guessing is this building over here. Uh, a temple nearly as ancient as the Kingdom of the Isles itself. Okay, well, we might hang out in the inn because, well, we've got restoratives working, so we're not going to bother with that. We've got a shop here. Let's go to the house. A man halted them. Ticket! He barked through gapped teeth. When James failed to respond quickly enough, he leaned closer and shouted, Are you deaf? I need your lecture ticket. What if we don't have a ticket? James replied. The man smiled an unpleasant smile, hooking his thumb at four extremely well-developed soldiers who looked to be members of the Malax Cross's constabulary. He squinted. Do you have tickets for this evening's lecture or no? No, James said, backing into the street. We don't want any trouble. We'll be leaving now. The door slammed closed. Interesting. I want a ticket. I want to find a ticket. Is this the same house? Assuming so. Let's go to the shop. Maybe they sell tickets. Everywhere James looked, this is um, the same text as at uh, one of the other shops we've run into. Fascinating. Alright, let's see. We've got some shit to sell. Uh, can you repair any of this stuff, my friend? You've got a lot of crap here, dude. We've got multiple armorer's hammers. This might be kind of tricky. Well, let's sell this. Actually, I don't think he... Yeah, never mind. He does care about the quality of it. Um, give you this. And this. And then we'll do some thrilling inventory management! Oh, can't fix it. I don't care. I'm going to sell it. Give this back. Because we have no use for it. Okie dokie. Um, we have this, which we could give some oil. We could lube it up. <laughs> we should get James. Um, well, actually, he's not. Well, whatever. Doesn't matter. Take that. Give that to you. Give this to you. And this to you. I don't think we actually have a whole lot to sell here, but let's. Take another look at what they've got for sale. They don't really have anything too interesting. Yeah, definitely not. Okay. Good to know. We have a bunch of potions and shit, so... Uh, we'll have to find a shop elsewhere where they deal in such things. Let's see. We've got this place locked in. So if we ever need to teleport to the Temple of Ruthia over in Darkmoor, it costs us a whopping 59 sovereigns. Um, let's go to the Chapel of Ishop here. Let's talk. James motioned to the figure across the room. The man walked over to join them. He stood before them, eyebrows arched inquisitively. Ho! Hey, Friar Tuck. Abbot Graves. Welcome, gentlemen. What brings you to the Abbey Shop? Would you like some delicious fried chicken? Or perhaps a nice tankard of melted lard? My young charge here wishes to, wish to visit your famed school of nobles. I don't think he would have let us leave Malik's Cross without paying a visit. Well, 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 I'm pleased to see that our reputation precedes us. Am I to assume you're interested in becoming a new pupil, or are you visiting from our estimable rival, the Academy of Magicians, the Stardock? He's actually not that fat. <laughs> I'm just... <laughs> it's the first thing that leaped to mind. It's just not a very flattering robe, I guess. And it does kind of give him man boobs, I don't know. You know what? I'm... He's a great guy. You know, I'm... he's being very kind to us. I shouldn't make light of his weight. <laughs> If you will, but I'm, I'll just give him a normal voice. I don't have a voice for Owen, but um, he's kind of got a Luke Skywalker air around him. 
Like, I'm talking uh, A New Hope, uh, Luke Skywalker. Like, but I was going to go to Tashi Station to pick up some power converters. That kind of whiny Luke Skywalker, but whatever. Uh, my father would never allow me to study magic formally, even though he more than has the financial resources to send me to Stardock. He thinks it's a waste of a young noble's time to spend 10 and 20 years with his nose stuck in a book. That's a fancy way of saying 30 and yet be hardly capable of doing anything else. If it weren't for a magician named Patris that I met once, I wouldn't know anything of magic at all. It is true that magicians study for longer periods of time with fewer visible results, but no course of study is a waste of time. Yeah, tell that to a history major. And while magic is not a primary staple in our directed studies here, Magician Pug is kind enough to occasionally send instructors from Stardock to lecture on issues that involve magicians. If you would be interested in enrolling, well, I regret we don't have time for that kind of detour. He's on crucial business that takes him elsewhere. What about you, senor? Is there anything in our curricula that interests you? Books and scrolls? Oh, I'm a bit too old for that sort of thing now. Really? How unfortunate for you. And I was preparing to offer you a chance to attend a lecture on tactics that is being taught by one of our guest instructors. Now that I think on it, you probably wouldn't be interested. It's being taught by this, well, odd fellow. A one-eyed gentleman who goes by the name Bastira. Bastira? You mean Guy de Bastira? King Liam's first advisor? Uh, yes, I believe that's his title. It's part of the Abbey Ishap's arrangement with King Liam. In exchange for setting aside part of our facilities here for the purposes of education, the king occasionally will loan us some of the finest minds in the kingdom. It works to our mutual benefit. I can still arrange to allow you in if you're still interested for a small donation of 20 sovereigns. That's very cheap. I will do that. Well, I think we can make time. Where do we need to go? In town, near the Queen's Row, there is a small hall that we have reserved for Guy's speech. Simply present this ticket at the door, and they will admit you all. I believe you will be in for a stimulating evening. <laughs> Thank you. We're looking forward to it. Okay, that's good. Let's get out of here. Let's go to the house. Take it to the house. A man took their ticket at the door. Waving smoke from his face, James was surprised by the number of young nobles seated in the lecture hall, most looking as if they would rather be drinking ale in the tavern across the street. Despite that, they made friendly company as they offered up seats to James and his companions. All rise for Guy of Rillanon, first advisor to the throne of the Kingdom of Isles. A page announced from the rear of the room, probably not like that. Um, after an uncomfortably long wait, a pair of men dressed in purple tabards advanced to the foot of the rude stage. <laughs> What's rude about it? Is it shaped like a dick? I think they're using rude in the sense that it is um, uh, ramshackle and crude would be a, a similar word that is also somewhat similar sounding. And they took up station. It looks on their faces stern and watchful. Quick behind them was a man dressed all in black. Johnny Cash, from tunic to trousers to the patch over his left eye, mounting the stage between his escorts. And that would be really awkward if it was indeed shaped like a dick. <laughs> I'm glad I said that earlier. Oh, go me. I set myself up for a hilarious joke. I'm an idiot. He looked out on the assemblage as if they were all his soldiers in the field. Seeing James, a smile touched the first advisor's face. It seems I'm not the only first advisor here, James of Crondor, Guy said, motioning for everyone to take their seats. I'm surprised Prince Arutha could spare your company. James shrugged and covered with a quick lie that seemed to satisfy all in the room, as anxious as the rest for the lecture to begin. Hours passed. After a lengthy discussion of the battles of at Deep Taunton and the siege of the Shamata garrison, the first advisor finished his lecture and dismissed his boggled students, stepping down from the podium to speak with James. A grave look was on Guy's face as he grasped the seigneur's shoulder. You are lucky most of the men in this room don't know Arutha, Guy whispered, glancing at Owen. If they did, none of them would believe you had sent to Romney to fetch this puny little squire. I'm all, I'm am also curious as to know why you are traveling in the company of a dark brother. Seeing the fire burning in the advisor's good eye, James realized the old man was asking the questions in deadly earnest, and that his two escorts were standing close for reasons other than show. I'll not have Arutha betrayed. Waiting until the rest of the students had been shunted out the door, James quickly began to explain the situation, allowing Gorath to fill in the details, which he only partially knew. When the when he mentioned the Nighthawks and Romney, the first advisor nodded. 
Prince Arutha is a right is Prince Arutha is a right to ascend you to a Romney. <laughs> Kai said, "There is a group of kingdom men there. I had Duke de Sevigny send them a few months ago when we were heard about the guild troubles brewing there. We had suspicions of the, that the guild of death was involved." Grabbing up his cloak, the first advisor nodded to his escorts to check the streets. If anyone in the kingdom can find the Nighthawks, it will be the men from Bastira. They've been of great help in the cause of the kingdom over the past few years. I'll warn you, however, that they've made quite a few enemies among the way or along the way. Watch your step between here and the Black Sheep Tavern. Once the guards had indicated that the road was clear, Guy was gone and the building's watchers shuffled them outside. Hmm, interesting. Okay, well, let's go to the inn. Oh, James motioned to a figure across the room. The man walked over to join them. He stood at them eyebrows out inquisitively. Ivan scald. I hope you haven't come for the match. It's already over. Match? What kind of match? You're in the Queen's Row, and you ask that question? A chess match, match of course. Oh, fifth math. <laughs> Sometimes I have a little bit of difficulty speaking. My My brain goes a little bit faster than my mouth. And that's gotten me into some trouble over the years, let me tell you. Anyways, uh, it was wondrous. Jamie Tiller was defending his title against that snot-nosed prat from the Abbey, Kyle Fisher. Fisher? Interesting. <laughs> Jamie opened it, moved his queen's pawn to fourth rank. Fisher opened with a bar's gambit. Arrogant cud. Cud. Like the stuff that a cow chews? Well, but Jamie actually maneuvered in into it with his knight. I was thinking that he was going for the queen, but he sacrificed his king's rook and took the priest. It's a brilliant move, but it left his queen, his own queen vulnerable, didn't it? You've got a good head for the game, senor. Oh, wait, I'm not reading it like Jimmy Stewart. Damn it! The prince likes to play, but we don't always have a board handy. Once you learn to play in your head, a board almost becomes redundant. I'd have to admit it's tougher earlier in the game. More pieces to keep track of. James is some kind of chess whiz, apparently. Good for him. It's still fun to watch, though. That's why the Queen's Row is here. Perhaps I can re relate the rest of the game over ale? Assuming you gents are buying, what can I get you today? Um, oh, there's a lot, a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff to talk about. Um, we'll ask him about food. <laughs> Let's change the subject abruptly. Any chance we can get something to eat? Wouldn't be much of a pub if you couldn't. It's Is it to eat here, or are you looking for something for the road? I would like it in a to-go container, please. Uh, seven gold a pack. We don't really need food. That's a pretty good deal, though, if that's for a pack of seven rations. Um, I hope your gold is digestible. Well, you could try. All right, lost and found. Do you keep things that people have lost here? Sometimes if it interests me, or if it seems like they would be coming back for it. Why? Have you lost something here before? No, I was just wondering if there was anything interesting you found. You think it's li unlikely the original owner is going to come back for. If so, I might be interested in taking them off your hands. What is that? What kind of question is that? Do you... I've never <laughs> thought to go to a lost and found to say, Hey, do you have some shit that you don't want? I'll take it. I guess that's James's uh, kleptomaniacal urges driving him ahead. Probably wouldn't do me any harm to clear out the area beneath the bar. I believe there are probably a few things. I'll tell you what, I'll sell you the lot of them sight unseen for 50 sovereigns? Uh, I, think, uh, I think I might do that later. Because we do have a bunch of shit is the problem. Uh... Any chance I can interest you in a game of chess? I'm not so sure you would want to play against me. I just learned a few new moves from a book I borrowed from the Abbey. Tell me the stakes, then I'll tell you whether I'm interested or not. Emeralds. Think you're up to it? I don't have any emeralds. Uh, do I? Well, anyways. Uh, Anpasa. Sorry, but you've piqued my curiosity. What is an Anpasa? I've seen quite a few variations of chess, but I don't think I've ever heard of that move. It's Keshin. One night I was playing this fellow from Durban. I had my game swinging on one particular pawn, and the game was in my favor. So what does he do but move his pawn to the square directly behind mine, then claim to have captured my piece? Oh, yeah, that's that thing that you can do in chess with pawns and stuff. That's an illegal move. So I said. He goes on to tell me that it's one of the most fundamental moves of the game. We argued about it for three hours until a student ran from the Queen's Road to the Abbey to dig up an old book, and there it was. 
Back of the text written in Keshin, the original rules of the game, Unpasa cost me two diamonds, and very nearly the Queen's Row itself. Needless to say, I don't allow that rule to be played in here anymore. Last fellow that tried to use it on me was a fellow named Navon du Sandau. And I set him straight. Though he showed me an incredible movie invented called Sandow's Retreat. Can't quite remember how it worked now, though. I'm not... I'm not a big chess guy, so I might be missing some references here, but in anyways, anyways, um, isn't there another move like a bar's gambit, but a little different? Aye, there's a bar's turn. There, that's a brave man's gambit. In the right place, it's about the most powerful structure a man can put out, but in the wrong place, it can cost you dearly. How does it work? I'll not be teaching you that play. If you knew truly how to use it, I'd have to give up playing chess against you. The very fact that you even know about that move tells me you know the game altogether too well. Um, how about some life advice? What do I do about my receding hairline? With all the trade moving back and forth through here, I imagine you talk to quite a few traders. I talk to my share. Most of the Queen's Row is a haven for the students from the Abbey. Should I just say Abbey? It's an Abbey. Um, anything unusual going on that someone making a long trip should know? Bridge out somewhere? Bandits attacking? Only thing odd I've heard recent is that Lord Lighton's got a batch of tax collectors stopping folk what are trying to get in out get it in and out of Lighton. Some ridiculous high amount of gold. If folk don't have it, the collectors just direct them the other way or end up splitting their spleens for them. Of course, the merchants around here wouldn't make a pence if they stood for it. They've apparently found some way to sneak around the guards. Interesting. Well, that is good to know about. I'm not going to challenge him to chess because I don't have any emeralds, I guess. Um, but I'm also not particularly interested. It's basically, in other taverns you can gamble, and I think it's mostly random what the result is. It might be based on some stat, though, so... It's been nice chatting with you. I think we may hang about a bit and chat with some of the students. Pretend like we're in college again and do some keg stands, maybe. Play beer pong and touch someone inappropriately and get expelled. Whatever you like. Me, I've got dishes to tend to. Thanks again. Perhaps we'll chat later. No, we won't. Well, we might. I don't know. Well, that sad sack of shit there. He doesn't look like a student. <laughs> Well, we'll bard and get some money. 89 sovereigns. Not bad. Not bad at all. There's the innkeeper with his back turned to us. Uh, this little fellow here is kind of unwholesome looking. Oh, it's a lady. Well then. Ha ha ha. Petrima. Wherever did you get those clothes, Lyle? Or Lissel? I don't know how to pronounce that. Let's say Lissel. Must have stitched them off a marquee somewhere. You're getting a mild bit bolder, aren't you? Well, I'm afraid you have me mistaken for someone else. My name is James. James, is it? <laughs> oh, of course it is. And I'm not your Grand Petrum either, I take it. You're masquerading again. This isn't like that time you ran about Malik's Cross for a month begging and chewed up soap, is it? What? What is that? Okay. <laughs> Don't know what that means. Oh, but you made some fine sovereigns with that act. With all that foam coming out of your mouth, a body would think you had the creeping mongus. And they'd pay a pretty coin just to have you away from them. You've always been a wily one, Lyle. Did you pinch any bread for me? I pinched a loaf earlier this morning, actually. Um, why can't you buy your own bread? Who pissed in your pot, eh? I like her. <laughs> <laughs> Who pissed in your Wheaties this morning? You know perfectly well that I haven't had that nothing since Jack died. Unless... What are you doing with an elf, boy? Don't you know they bring bad luck? They're the ones what killed Jack and st are stirring up all that trouble in Southern and... What's gotten into your head? Have you run mad? What trouble in Saladin are you referring to, madam? You... You really aren't Lyle, then, are you? Or are you, then? Then are you, are you, then, whatever. But you're his mirror image if you are. How could this be, unless... Some kind of fairy evil, isn't it? That's what it is! Some kind of fairy magic! And you're... You finally come for me, took... Lyle's form! Oh, we aren't brothers of the dark path, miss! <laughs> 
<laughs> I would like to see Jimmy Stewart himself actually say that. <laughs> Please, trust us. I'm... Perhaps I may bear some resemblance to this Lyle character you're talking about, but we're just ordinary folk. I'd like to talk to Lyle, however. He sounds like, uh, like he might be a relative. Well, I guess you don't look like evil fairies. <laughs> Leastways, none I've ever heard of. <laughs> I'm sorry. Lyle might be your brother? Well, I don't know. I never knew my father, and my mother never mentioned a twin. But when I was taken captive in Crondor, a few of the men who were guarding me kept asking about places I'd never been to and about people I've never met. At first I'd wanted to dismiss what they were saying, but then I got to thinking about some of the events that happened before the Battle of Sevenin. Someone tried to slip in a double for Prince Arutha. Maybe the Mornell are repeating their old strategies. This is all very interesting, but I haven't had a bite to eat in days. Do you think you could spare something for me? Oh, you seem fine. Let's give you a little pack of rations. Last I saw of Lyle, he was heading towards Lighton. Said something about wanting to meet some gentlemen there. More than likely, he'll be staying away from the main roads. Try as he might, he doesn't have he does have a tendency to get into trouble now and again. Like you, miss. Watch out for yourself. Okay, well that's fine. Um. I don't really want to hang out here, I guess. Um, the party's abilities have increased. Well, let's see how. Assessment. Well, that's uh, interesting. Let's go to Owen. His assessment. And his assessment. And his barding. Okay, well, uh, I think I might take a quick break here. And uh, let's take a quick look at the map. See how far we've progressed, which I imagine isn't terribly far. Yeah, we've basically just gone from here to here. Well, uh, we'll head to Lighten in the next episode and um, see if we can find this uh, Lyle fellow who bears a not-so-passing resemblance to James. Perhaps he's a double, perhaps he's a twin, perhaps it's a case of mistaken identity. All this and more in the next episode of Betrayal at Crondor.